This video is brought to you by BetUS Sportsbook and Casino. All right, Raider Nation, it is that time. It is week one in the NFL. Yes, you get to watch Raiders football this week, and we're here to talk about it on Silver and Black today and Odyssey Sports. Original podcast also heard on the radio in Las Vegas. That's right. We grace the waves, the airwaves in Sin City with our uh, beautiful voices on KDON 101.5 FM and also 98.5 HD2, The Bet Las Vegas, where you can hear us both, of course, Odyssey radio stations. We are an Odyssey Sports original podcast. Uh, and if you're listening to us on the radio, thanks for being with us. But remember, you can also uh, apply, apply. You can subscribe, not apply, but subscribe to the podcast anywhere you get your audio. That way you can hear the rest of our shows throughout the week as well. So thanks for being with us. And I say us because it's me, Scott Colbranson, your host, along with our co-host, my man, the Midtown Mo legend, and that is Mr. Mo Moten, senior NFL writer at Bleach Report. He is also a contributor on TNT television and CNN sometimes. He's all over the place. And he is the Raiders columnist at sportsnot.com. And like me, he also does his football betting at BetUS. I want to give a shout out quickly to our friends at BetUS who sponsor our video feed. So if you're over on YouTube or Rumble or Facebook, wherever you watch us, make sure you hit the cool link in the description. You get a nice little bonus. Yes, we give you something for free here on the show. Uh, but uh, we're back with you, and uh, we're talking Raiders football. Mo, finally, finally, and I know I talked a little bit about it on Tuesday, but finally we get to talk about some football as in is football season is here. It's with us, and we're ready to roll, baby. It's about time. <laughs> that, that LeBron James meme that you see on Twitter when he says about time when he wins his uh, title. It's about time. It, it feels like it's weird. It feels like football is gone for a year. It, it's really, I mean, it if does. you count the preseason, if you count the preseason, it's what, six months? Yeah. But it feels like forever since we watched a, you know, legitimate football game. And I'm just glad to have it back. I'm glad to have a regular schedule again. I know that's a personal thing that people don't care about, but mm -hmm. uh, it's it's also it's always good to have a schedule. And I can tell readers and my audience where they can find me. Of course, I, I usually do that at the end of the show. But this year, it's going to be a busy year. And I'm excited for it, as I said, because I do think the Raiders will pull off some surprises, even though some people had some uh, comments about our, our season predictions that they weren't happy with. Last yes, show. and that's true. We both picked the Raiders to go eight and nine. Just so if, if you missed last show and you haven't watched it again, shame on you. I'm watching you. But uh, yeah, eight and nine. And I will say this because I, I had one of our listeners that is uh, that that I'll show remain nameless. I try to keep some of the conversations private. But this listener said, "Hey, I don't think I don't think they're going to win six games." And and this is a hardcore fan, Raider Nation. I know some of you are going to say, "Oh, he's not if he says six wins." But no, really, he is. And I told him, I said, you know, I could see the Raiders winning six games, but I could also see them winning nine games. Like, I think it could be, you could go either way, depending what happens. I think if the defense performs like everybody thought it could before the preseason, I'm not counting the preseason much against the defense. There's question marks there, as we know. Can they, can they rush the passer from the inside? Can they stop the run? Can they find the play they need on the outside opposite Jack Jones at cornerback, all those things we've talked about for months here, Mo at the same time, I think they'll be pretty good. And now the offense has all the weapons you need. Can the quarterbacks be consistent? That's the question. But finally we get to see them <laughs> on Sunday uh, against the chargers. And some of those answers will become apparent. We will see them in action. I go back because it's my theme for the year, Antonio Pierce, Resume on the grass. We finally, there will be no guessing, Mo. We will see them play a football game against a Charger team. Let's face it, that's not great. Its defense has, has lost a, a bit, even though it's still got some. So they're in a position, I think, to make a statement here in this first game. So when you said questions that could be answered, it, it's funny you say that because I had a Bleach Report Live on Wednesday. Shout out to everyone who joined that Bleach Report Live. And I went through, like, five of the biggest questions the Raiders can answer this year. And you kind of touched on two of them. And one of them was, is Antonio Pierce's coaching style sustainable for a winning culture? Mm. Right. I think that's a big question simply because 
We saw him take over last year. Now, can he carry some of that momentum into this year while the Chargers have a lot buzzing running with Jim Harbaugh? Justin Herbert's healthy right now. A lot of new over there in Los Angeles. So momentum against momentum there. And the other thing, Luke Getzey, and that's probably my biggest question about the Raiders this offseason <laughs> on offense is, is Luke Getzey a good play caller? Because while we all pay attention to the quarterback position, and rightfully so, your play caller can get the best out of average or he can not get anything out of average, and then you have a below-average quarterback situation, which is going to sink your season. So Luke Getz, he's a big part of this. It's, I, I think it's people focus a lot on the quarterback. It's a quarterback-driven lead. I get it. But play callers matter. You see quarterbacks all the time. They play under a certain play caller, and they, and they look like a pretty good quarterback. Then they go to another play caller, not so good. Jimmy Garoppolo, <laughs> right? Jimmy Garoppolo oh. was in the Super Bowl. Goes to the Raiders, and everyone's thinking, not everyone. Some people are thinking, oh, Jimmy Garoppolo, decent. But not a lot of our audience is like, no, nah, we're out on Jimmy Garoppolo. But Jimmy Garoppolo with the 49ers wasn't the same Jimmy Garoppolo with the Raiders. And you see that <laughs> all over the league. Not even close. And not even close. Now, Gardner Minshew coming from Indianapolis with Shane Steichen, now with Luke Getzey. So my eyes are on Luke Getzey right out of the gate in his first game against the Chargers. It was the summer of Getzey. We talked about it, right? It, it, it was the idea that, look, Devontae Adams. Brock Bowers, Michael Mayer, Jacoby Myers, Trey Turner coming on, nice young player as long as he's catching the ball. They have this. They have an offensive line that could be pretty good. We don't know how good because there's question marks there. And, of course, we got the depth chart. Jackson Powers Johnson, as expected, is not starting. So we know Cody Whitehair jumps in there as a, as a, as a uh, veteran. But you look at that and you say, okay, so you're right. Can you – put it together because it is important. There's a reason why those guys like Johnson over in Detroit who decided to stay put, but there's a reason why head coaches come from those ranks, from offensive coordinator. They make a difference. If you have a good offensive coordinator, gets the most out of the players, out of their talent, out of the scheme, they rise. And so that's going to be a big deal with this. Any surprises? I I, I didn't have any, Mo, with the, the final or at least – semi-final depth chart going in my dog is jumping on me here um going into into the first game here in week one no surprise for me it's about what i expected it to look like i know at the beginning of the offseason we said jack Spires johnson had a shot to earn a starting job but after he's you know he missed multiple several practices going back to otas he missed time then i believe it was a concussion issue uh we said it uh i talked about on the show that at about, I would say, right before the preseason game started, I said, I don't think Jackson Powers Johnson is going to start simply because he's been banged up since his last year at Oregon. And now while a lot of fans are expecting Jackson Powers Johnson to look a lot like Richie Incognito once he's on the field, I think it'll take maybe a quarter to a half the season before we see him start. Unless Cody Whitehair is just complete, absolutely atrocious. And even then, you might sign a veteran guard or – you plug in Andrews Pete, who's more of a guard than a tackle, but it we probably won't see Jackson Barnes Johnson until maybe close to midway through the season. Yeah, no, it's going to be interesting. By the way, on today's show, we're going to be welcoming in Ryan Dyrud of the Los Angeles Football Network, LAFB.com. If you haven't gone there, if you want to see what's going on, some of our Raiders fans here are SC fans or UCLA fans. Uh, I know you're not Chargers or Rams fans, they cover those teams too. But uh, he's going to come on and talk about the Chargers, what's changed down there. We're going to get some insight into the new regime in Los Angeles because it's completely different as well and some of the issues they have, but also some of the advantages they may have. So we'll get that from him coming up in segment two. We will give you our picks for the game, by the way, right at the end of the mailbox, uh, mailbag at the end of the show. So stay with us on that one. We've already kind of talked about it, but I will we'll get into that directly uh, soon after. Mo, when you look at this game too, clearly um, it, we, we saw, oh, let me pull this up because I got to, I got to tell you this. I got an email from our, uh, our friends and I don't really know them. So I'm calling them friends. Cause I'll just call them friends. Not, they're not good friends. Like bet us is they're, they're friends. So uh, what they said, vivid seats, uh, if I can find it here, of course I, I I'm losing it, but vivid seats talked about, and, and I know Raiders fans always talk about going down to Los Angeles, right? And how it's such a big Raiders crowd at SoFi with, with the Chargers. And that one, uh, they they sent me another one again here too. If I can find, there it is. Okay, got it. I got it finally. 
geez, computers act, act in my age here, too old. Um, okay, it says here, according to Vivid Seats, fan forecast, they have this proprietary data they do now for games. Raider Nation is taking over SoFi as the crowd projected to be 62% Raiders fans, with fans traveling an average of 153 miles to catch the Raiders at SoFi Stadium. Not surprised by that, are you? Not surprised. Um, I think I was sent to another, I forgot who it was, uh, one of my betting uh, buddies was breaking down the game, and, and you know he understands that the Raiders have a have a hold on that stadium when the Chargers and the Raiders play, and I think he expected a seventy thirty. But as wow. I said to him, as I said to him, and as I said on my Bleach Report live on Wednesday, that there's a lot of optimism more than usual for the Chargers within that fan base. I understand yeah. that they're they're perpetual underachievers. I get that. But I think it's a little different this year with Harbaugh coming in because they understand that he is such an upgrade at the head coaching position over what they had in Brandon Staley. So there's kind of a renewed vigor there, and I expect to see a lot more Chargers fans than we used to seeing, but it will still be a pro Raider crowd. Absolutely. And we're going to take our first break. When we come back, we're going to talk to Ryan Dyrud from the L.A. Football Network, who's going to give us insight on all of that, the Chargers, what the fans are thinking, how it's been around the team, Jim Harbaugh, you name it. We're going to get that from Ryan. So stay where you are. You're listening to Silver and Black today, an Odyssey Sports Original Podcast. Also heard on KDON 101.5 FM in Las Vegas, as well as 98.5 HD2, The Bet. Don't go anywhere. We're coming right back. All right, folks, it's time for us to tell you about our good friends at BetUS. And if you're like me, you want to bet some football this weekend, right? I mean, Raiders start. Do you bet with your heart? Do you bet on the Raiders? At I'm going to bet some Raider bets. I'm going to show you today, but you got to check out BetUS because uh, if you're going to bet football, let me tell you, there's no better place to go than BetUS where if you use our link below, by the way, we got that link right below in the description here on the video, you can get 125% deposit bonus three times up to $2,000 by using that link. So make sure you visit it, but let's jump in and talk about the bets that I have going for today. Uh, and I'm going to tell you about today that is, and that is prop bets. For the Raiders. Yes, I'm going in and I'm going to make some bets here uh, before my wife catches me uh, talking about uh, betting football, right? Because <laughs> she she might not want me to, to do that. Uh, let me get this on the screen. Here we go. Okay. So I want to show you what I'm going to do here too. I look, I look in the Raiders. I think it's going to be a, a, a pretty close game, actually, despite the 63-21 the win last time they met. I like the Raiders scoring the first play of the game, um, uh, first scoring play of the game, I should say, as a touchdown. Right. I love that one. In fact, I love that one so much. I'm going big on it. Big in my terms. Right. Uh, as a fifty dollar bet to win one twenty. You see, there it is. I put my money where my mouth is. So you guys have have no question that I'm actually in on this one. Then I look at the total TDs in a game four and a half. It's even. So they're expecting scoring in this game. I'm not going to touch that one. But what I do like is actually total field goals in the game. I think the Charger, I think the Raiders defense is going to show who they are and are going to hold the Chargers and Justin Herbert a little bit uh, to a tight one. And if they do that, that means the Chargers more likely are going to have to score uh, more field goals. So I like the over three and a half field goals. I'm going to put another 20 bucks on that one here. All right. So there you go. There's my two bets. And then I come down to the bottom of this as I'm looking through all the props. By the way, you can go to every game, every game, for the Raiders and do and do prop bets and it's having some scrolling issues on my computer here, but nonetheless, I like this too as well. When you look at the the um, the win margin three way, I love this one. Win margin three way Raiders to win by six or more points at two fifty, right plus two fifty. I'm doing that for another twenty, so I don't get kicked out of the house. If I did more, my wife would kill me. But nonetheless, there we go. So there's my three bets. You can get all the prop bets you want on this Raiders game on Sunday or on any other game with our good friends at BetUS. So make sure you do that and use the link below to get the bonus. All right. So good luck to you guys. And we'll come back next week and see how I did. Welcome back. It's time. Silver and Black today. Segment two for the show. We appreciate you guys being with us. We are an Odyssey Sports Original Podcast. Also heard on 101.5 KDON in Las Vegas and 98.5 The Bet HD2, both Odyssey radio stations. The Los Angeles Chargers under Jim Harbaugh, year number one, 
That's what we're talking about this segment. And to do that, we bring in our good friend Ryan Dyrud from the Los Angeles Football Network. You can follow him on X at Ryan Dyrud, L-A-F-B, if you want to find out what's going down in L.A. Uh, Ryan, thanks for being with us. Man, big weekend in L.A. with obviously the Trojans taking it to LSU and Brian Kelly, which made me as a Notre Dame guy so <laughs> happy. But welcome back, uh, and thanks for coming in to talk about the Chargers. Yeah, talk of the town the Trojans are, but uh, <laughs> but thanks for having me on, guys. Uh, so happy the NFL is back, and what a what a banger we get to start the season. Chargers Raiders always a blast. So happy to talk with you guys. Yeah, and they bookended this year. They get to start the season and end the season with the Chargers, which is really interesting. And of course, the last time these two teams saw each other, it was a big change in mm -hmm. that the Raiders won sixty three twenty one. Brandon Staley gone. Tom Telesco gone. He goes up I-15 to Vegas, and now he's the GM of the Raiders. Go figure. When you look at that and what happened last year and all the changes in this organization in the offseason, talk a little bit about the difference you've seen both uh, from those people in the organization but also from the players as you guys have talked to uh, the team and seen them go through training camp up until the season started. Yeah, well, it was funny after that game because for how much these fan bases hate each other, I think a lot of Charger fans, like, we're thankful to the Raiders for kind of forcing <laughs> their hand. Uh, and so uh, the Spanos family happened to clean house there and bring in who they did. So, but no, it's been, uh, I think, a ton of excitement. I mean, this fan base is always, I think a lot of fan bases are. Every year there's this renewed hope and excitement, but it does feel different this year just because of the the pedigree and the history that Jim Harbaugh brings with him. Um, I was out, I've been out at training camp a few times at their new beautiful facility in El Segundo, and it certainly feels different. Um, you know, I, I was a big, Obviously, it didn't work out, but I did enjoy Brandon Staley, his time as a, as a coach, obviously not the product on the field, but just how he dealt with media and, and what he how he ran things. But the way Harbaugh does things is very different. It's 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 a disciplined approach to practice. There's no music going on. It's smash mouth guys flying around. They've got the college signs out there that he used at Michigan Colin plays in. So it's a different operation that we've seen so far. We'll see how it uh, all matriculates actually on the field come regular season. I, I personally believe there's going to be still some growing pains and it's, you know, there's, I think there's some pundits that have the charters as like a dark horse playoff team. I see them more as this is a rebuild year, a culture building year. And then next year is when they can really kind of take off, but certainly it seems to be uh, things in the right direction. And I think the synergy between Harbaugh and Joe Ortiz, the GM uh, certainly seem aligned and they have definitely a, a type that they are trying to go after and a type of program they're trying to build. So Ryan, there was a word you used in, in that response, smash mouth. And I want to, I want to get to that because charges draft Joe all for the offensive line tackle. They bring in JK Dobbins, Gus Edwards, who are both familiar with Greg Roman as the offensive coordinator. We all know Greg Roman running the football has been his thing, usually with a mobile quarterback. Now their wide receiver core, they let go of Keenan Allen. Uh, traded Keenan Allen to the Bears, let go of Mike Williams. Now, Chargers fall behind. Do they stick to that smash mouth style of play, or do we see more passing than we usually see out of a Greg Roman offense with Josh Palmer, DJ Chark? What's going on with Quentin Johnson? Is he is he going to come on in his second year after an underwhelming first year? What happens with that Chargers offense when they fall behind? Yeah, Mo, it's a great question. I'm going to be totally honest. I'm not totally sold on the offense. I, I Jim Harbaugh is a great hire. I think what he's built, I wasn't sold on the Greg Roman hire. I think uh, he's done some good things. Obviously there's history with Harbaugh with him in San Francisco, but we saw that offense, even in San Francisco, start to fizzle out down the stretch. And, and I don't know how Justin Herbert fits in that. When you see what they did with Colin Kaepernick, when you see what they did with Lamar Jackson, not necessarily Jim Harbaugh, but Greg Roman with his brother, John Harbaugh, that's not the style of quarterback he is. Yeah, he can be mobile and it definitely has athleticism, but this is a guy with a cannon arm. And I would hate to see that, um, I guess, hidden, if you will, by this smash mouth style offense. Now that's what they want to do. And I think they believe that that will open things up for the play action, will open things up for him to stretch the field after they're able to set the, the ground game going. So to answer your question, that's going to be their bread and butter. That's what they're going to stick to. But because this is, in my opinion, the best quarterback that Jim Harbaugh has had as a coach, maybe maybe not Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck was obviously great. But since Andrew Luck, this is probably the best overall arm talent that he's had. If they get in that point in the game where they have to sling it out, then I think they can kind of repurpose, redesign the offense to have him just go sling it about the yard. But until it's like they're down big, I, I expect this to be definitely a run for the team. 
All right. Sorry, folks. We've had some technical issues with Ryan throughout the show. And unfortunately, we lost him there and we got to roll on. So we'll get back with that. But we get some information there. I mean, he talked about, Mo, the fact that the Raider or excuse me, the, the Chargers in some ways want to do a little bit of what the Raiders do. Right. We know this from Jim Harbaugh. They want to run downhill. They want to beat the ball inside. They want to win in the trenches, too. Shouldn't be a surprise. See, and this is my difference between the Raiders and the Chargers being physical smash mouth teams. I think the Chargers have to be a smash mouth team because they have mm -hmm. limited weapons on the perimeter. I think the Raiders want to be a smash mouth team, but they have the perimeter playmakers to score some points. And that's why I have the Raiders beating the Chargers on Sunday, 23 20. Yeah. It, it, and, and I think, too, I mean, look, I, I didn't get to ask the question before we lost Ryan, but it was really about the defense. You know, they're changing with Jesse Minter there as the defensive coordinator. And I think, yes, you got Bosa, you have Mac, you have some, some, some talent up front there. It's aging talent, but it's there, right? Bosa can't stay healthy most of the time, <clears throat> but with that changeover in system, I think you're going to see some of that too. Not only do they lose talent, but they also are learning a new system. Just like the Raiders are learning an offensive system. It's the same thing. And so I think you're going to see early on, now, they might get it together better towards the end of the year like the Raiders did uh, a, a few years ago, but it's going to be, I think, a situation, too, we'll see in this first game, though, that the, the Chargers are still trying to learn it, communicate it, and the Raiders can take advantage of that. And that's why the line at BetUS is, I think, pretty low relative to the other games. Higher-scoring yeah. games are usually in the high 40s. I believe there's one game that's at 51 over at BetUS. I believe that's the uh, – I want to say that's the Jaguars and Dolphins. But the Raiders Chargers game is on a low side, low 40s for that reason that Chargers is a lot of new, both sides of the ball. Raiders yeah. have a new offense. So there's going to be a feeling out here. And that's why I say I think both teams are going to come in and want to establish the run and make it a lot easier on their quarterbacks. Yes, absolutely. It's going to be fun to watch. All I know is it's football. What's going to be fun too is the next segment when we come back from this break, we're going to get to your phone calls. And again, our thanks to Ryan Dyrud. Our apologies to you guys that we couldn't finish the conversation with him due to some technical issues on his end. So we will definitely catch up with him towards the end of the season. He'll also be on with us to talk about the Rams too. So we'll get to that. We appreciate his time and efforts, and we appreciate you being with us. This is Mo and Scott. We're coming back right after these messages. Enough of hearing us talk about the Raiders. It's time to hear from you. Any Oakland Raider fan, Las Vegas Raider fan, stand up. On this edition of the Raider Nation Mailbag. That, that, that black hole rock and rolling. Don't be a wallflower. Be a part of the show. Leave your question or message by calling 702-900-7869. That's 702-900-7869. Or drop us an email at mail at silverandblacktoday.com. All right. Welcome back. It is the close of the show. when we get to your questions, right? Can we check it out and see what's going on? Out there in Raider Nation, thanks for being back with us here on Silver and Black today. And uh, another shout out to our good friend Ryan Dyrud for joining us in the second segment and uh, giving us a little bit of insight on the Chargers. So thanks to that. All right, Mo. So we're going to get to this. Um, before we do that, real quick, I want to I want to give our pick for the game. Uh, and and st I'll start with you on Raiders Chargers. We kind of talked about this earlier in the week, but I want to remind folks, uh, how do you see this game going down? Give me give me your prediction on your score, on the score as well. So I feel like this is going to start off as a physical game, as Ryan Dyrud said. Chargers want to play a smash mouth style of football. I think the Raiders do too, to an extent, because as I said on the previous show, the Raiders have more playmakers than the Chargers very clearly. And Devontae Adams – didn't take kindly to the Chargers calling the Raiders garbage and using his picture <laughs> on social media. I think you're going to see a lot of Gardner Minshew to Devontae Adams connections on Sunday, and I think that's going to tilt the balance in the Raiders' favor. If you if you go up on Bleacher Report, you, you see the picks that we have. I was the analyst for the Chargers-Raiders game. I predicted 23-20 Raiders with Devontae Adams getting the game-winning touchdown. Yeah, and I had the same score, 23-20, and, and I don't know how they get it, but I just think that it's going to be a close <laughs> one. Uh, as I mentioned with Ryan, that, that Charger defense has lost a little bit, but they still have Bosa and Khalil Mack, who against the Raiders offensive line, we'll see how Cody Whitehair does stepping in there. Jackson Powers Johnson, of course, would have been a rookie too, but I do think that uh, this is going to be a game, as usual with these two teams, it's going to be one up front. And we'll see how that all runs out. But uh, that is our prediction. So we both have the, the Raiders winning this game to start off 1-0. So we'll see how it goes. You guys can tell us in the comments what you think. 
is going to go down, and uh, we certainly appreciate that. All right, we're going to get out to the calls. We're getting to first our good buddy Anthony in Idaho. He kicks us off here on the Raider Nation mailbag. Gentlemen, it's uh, Anthony from Idaho again calling in. Um, I just listened to your predictions for the season. <laughs> um, Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Not bad, and I don't oh. completely disagree. Um, the optimist in me says that we're probably going to get closer to 10 or 11 wins, but I will say that you guys make a great point. A lot of fans don't pick up on this. Just because our team got better, supposedly, you know, we don't even know that for sure, but assuming our team did get better, we do also have to account for the fact that other teams also get better. So that's just something to keep in mind for a lot of fans. Um, but I am hoping for 10 wins myself. Um, don't like you guys having us being swept by the Chiefs, but uh, I'll overlook that. That's, that's fine, whatever. Um, as far as the quarterback talk for next year, I know we're getting way ahead of ourselves, but um, my my understanding, or I would say that my prediction would be that if we have a draft spot again where we're kind of in no man's land, I think that's where we may entertain the idea of a Dak Prescott, even though he would be expensive, you'd get a proven veteran who's still in his prime who could still win us games. And so we won't have that question anymore for a while. Um, if we were able to somehow go into the draft, um, I do like some of the quarterbacks coming out. Shooter Sanders wouldn't be bad if we had the right offensive coordinator. And I would hope to God that Dion is just too busy coaching at Colorado still and that he'll be somewhat distracted so he won't interfere with what we going on have going on over there. Um but I also am I, I believe Mo is as well. I'm a big Cam Ward fan. Um hoping that he shows enough and we're able to acquire him somehow. I think that'd be the my preference. But Shadir I think does have a lot of talent. Um and he's been advised by Tom Brady often. So I, I do think he has the skill set to um, thrive in the NFL. So, but I'm not even going to worry about that too much right now. I'm just excited for Raiders football and uh, let's go blow out these Chargers. <laughs> I don't know about a blowout, but Anthony, thanks for your call, man. And I would say, I'll say off the top, Mo, just real quick on this one. Um, I do not believe Dak Prescott will be available. I don't think Jerry Jones is going to let somebody sign him away. I just don't. I just don't think so. Yeah, I think I said this uh, a few weeks ago. If, if if Dak Prescott were available, I'd be all for it. And, mm-hmm. I, and I've said this, that I, I don't think the, the discourse around Dak Prescott is fair because when you bring up his name, there are some people like, ah, uh, what, no parts of Dak Prescott. Look at what he's doing. He's not good. Look at his playoff record. Folks, there are a lot of good quarterbacks who have poor playoff records. I mean, look mm-hmm. at Lamar Jackson struggles <laughs> when he gets to the playoffs. And I'm sure a lot of fans when the Lamar Jackson thing was going on wanted Lamar Jackson. Uh, Josh Allen hasn't been great in the playoffs. But when you look at Dak Prescott and what he's done with the Cowboys, get, helping get that team to 12-5 and five for three consecutive seasons, you're telling me you wouldn't take a 12-5 and five season with the Raiders <laughs> with Dak Prescott and give yourself, give your team oh, yeah. a chance to, to win something in the playoffs? I mean, I would take that in a heartbeat, but I'm like you. I don't think the Cowboys are going to let him go. Do I do think the price is going to be high where the Cowboys may drag their feet a bit, but I think ultimately, like they did with CD Lamb this offseason, that they eventually sign him. The other quarterback people we're going to talk about really quick, Scott, mm-hmm. the Hendon Hooker talk, I think has to stop at this point because I think the Lions see Hendon Hooker as potentially their future. Remember, Jared Goff was drafted in 2000, I believe, 16. Yeah. So they see Hendon Hooker as their QB, too. I know a lot of Ray fans like Hendon Hooker. I like what I saw some out of some of his preseason performances – but I don't think he's going to be available unless you're going to overpay for him. And why would you overpay for a Hendon Hooker when you could probably draft a quarterback uh, in, in 2025? Because I don't think at the top of the draft you're going to have a bunch of teams that need a quarterback. I think the Patriots are going to be an absolute disaster this year, and they're going to have a top three pick. They don't need a quarterback. They just drafted one. So that's one team already I look at that could potentially move down with a top three pick. So if I'm the Raiders, and let's say a veteran is not available to come in and take this team to the playoffs, I'm waiting for the draft and drafting my quarterback. Cam Ward is my guy. Anthony, we're both in the Cam Ward hype train. <laughs> we'll see how it all pans <laughs> out. All right. We're going to get to our next call. That is Dave Casper's ghost calling us from up in New England. 
Hey guys, this is Dave Casper, the ghost from the Empire State in the Hudson oh, that's Valley. Right, New York, Hudson Valley. What I say? Uh, I just wanted to. Uh, I haven't. I didn't call because I didn't have anything to say last week, <laughs> other than to say that I still think they're going seven and ten. I know both you guys uh, picked eight and nine, also known as the Jeff Fisher zone, and I stand corrected, mm -hmm. Mo. You did point out that uh, they, I. I erroneously said they were now in the fish jeff fisher zone they have been in the fat jeff fisher zone <laughs> oh, wow. and i guess i'll uh, update my comment and say they are going to stay in the fit jeff fisher zone <laughs> of course, the anyway i digress uh the chargers game i think it's a game they can win they should win but uh you you never like to put too much stake in one game but I think it's imperative that if, I think this first game will determine a lot about this greater season. If they can win, then, you know, maybe there's an avenue to eight, nine wins uh, mm -hmm. for them. I, I, I don't think they're beating Baltimore the following week. I think they're going to lose to Cleveland. So if they lose to the Chargers, they can easily be one and three. And then the season can go sideways real quick. On the other hand, if they now jumping towards the end of the season, if they can somehow get to six and seven or seven and six, I would say seven and six, those last four games, three of them are very winnable, in my opinion. So there is an avenue uh, to nine, ten wins if things break right. Unfortunately, I don't think things will break right. <laughs> I'm sticking to my seven and ten record. Um, but I, I, I will. I, I do expect them to beat the Chargers. I'm expecting a win, um, at, at one if one of their seven wins, and we'll see where it goes from there. But um, yes. Anyway, guys, uh, great show. Keep listening. Uh, I'll talk to you after the Chargers Raiders game. All right, there you go, Dave Casper, the Ghost, Hudson Valley, New York, not New England. But, uh, yeah, we talked a lot about the schedule last time, so we won't exhaust it there. But, Dave, good. Thanks for sharing your feelings there, man. And I, I don't disagree. I mean, I've said it. and Like I said, I said I could see him winning six games. I could see him winning ten games. It could go either way, but we'll see how it all works. That, Mo, anything really on that quick. One? Yeah, yeah, really quick. That that's probably where my floor and ceiling is for them. Six is probably the floor. I did yep. bet the over though on six and a half wins. So Dave Casper mm -hmm. goes, you would hit the over if you're right. So we would all hit the over if we were right. Yay! But, uh, I do I see the the ceiling as at bet US, of course. But I, I I do see the ceiling though as ten wins, as, as Dave Casper goes said. There is an avenue at the back end of of the schedule. But I will say one last thing, regardless of what happens on Sunday, Dave. There's going to be an overreaction. If the Raiders win the game, you're going to see people come out of the wood, woodworking. Up, oh, book your playoff tickets. If the Raiders lose the game, they're going to go to some fans. They're going to go 0 17. So prepare for the overreaction because people are waiting for football to happen. And that's what happens after the first game. Sure, Big it does. Everybody's geared up. All right. Yep. Again, uh, Dave Casper, the ghost. Thank you so much. All right. Now we're going Great to Raider problem. Vengeance in Nolens. Yes. Hey, Mo. Hey, Scott. This is uh, Raider Vengeance from New Orleans in the 504. Um, I like to call it uh, Raider Cast-Off Central. <laughs> Down here we got uh, Derek Carr, Dennis Allen, Dave Ziegler. They got Foster oh, Moreau and Jonathan Abram. Um, oh, yeah. I do get asked often if uh, if we want Derek Carr back. By <laughs> um, I would be lying if uh, lately I hadn't been uh, considering it. Uh, it just kind of seems like we're never allowed to have, uh, you know, the things we need when we need them, like uh, together. Um, when I think about Derek Carr's play, he always kind of brought us back in games and he had those electric throws. And, you know, he, you know, I, I'll never kind of talk bad about him because he did offer excitement and had us in games that we had no business being in. And, and the problem was always. Uh, you know, his defense could never, you know, stop anything, you know, and that was just unfortunate. And it's just kind of hard for me not to imagine what uh, it would be like with this group of playmakers um, on the offensive side, um, along with, uh, you know, complimentary defense. <laughs> <laughs> what a concept. But alas, we move forward. Um, it's Minshew Mania and the Irish Cannon. I do feel that y'all's uh, prediction of eight and nine is pretty spot on. Um, and I do think, uh, you know, unfortunately, until we get our quarterback of the future, this is kind of our ceiling. Um, but I love Raiders football. It's always Raider Nation for life. It's going to be up, down, going to throw some things, 
break some things, maybe <laughs> have a few choice words every Sunday or Monday. Uh, but you know, it is what it is. We, we march on. I uh, love the content y'all pull out, uh, put out. Thanks so much for what y'all do. Uh, congrats to Mo on becoming a TV celebrity. <laughs> Um, and I will have Stop. a piece of cheesecake to celebrate. Oh, for you. Uh, uh, for week one. Oh, Raider uh, Vengeance down in New Orleans. By the way, one of my favorite cities in the world. At least when the Raiders lose, you can go drown your sorrows in etouffee. You can go get a shrimp po' boy. You can get all kinds of amazing cuisine down yeah. in New Orleans. But I, it blows me away how great we have we have it for listeners. Right, our listeners are just. Not because they're agreeing with us. I want to make that clear. But I think they're realistic, right? And and we heard it earlier, of course, with Anthony up in Idaho who said, look, I think we could win 10 or 11 games, uh, but I don't necessarily disagree with your prediction of eight wins. So it, it, it's one of those years. I said it, Mo. I'll bring it back up again. Don't get too high. Don't get too low. I'll say this. And, and I actually mean, regardless of where you have the Raiders finishing this year with their record, I think they're going to be an exciting team. So yes. because you have Garner Min Garner Minshew, not just his personality, but his play style, he's going to throw yeah. some passes up there. You know he is. Now some of them may get picked off. We hope not, but he's gonna he's gonna add some excitement to the offense. He's got the mobility. I, I, you know, Aiden O'Connell doesn't really have that, so he's going to be able to move in the pocket, extend plays, and while he doesn't have the strongest arm, he's willing to put it up there. So there are going to be times yeah. where you're going to be like, "Whoa, what a throw! Big play!" And there'll be times where you're going to be like, Gardner Mitchell, what are you doing? Go sit down, bring in Aiden O'Connell. <laughs> so the excitement, the, the the emotions, all of that stuff as a fan watching your Raiders play football is going to be there this season. And as Caller said, Raider Vengeance, who hit below the belt with that cheesecake comment. I'm going to let that oof, slide, though. Oof. Uh, I'm riding with you on that one. I'm excited for the season. Can't wait for Sunday. All right. There you go, Raider Vengeance. We got one more time. We'll call one. Excuse, pa. We have time <laughs> for one more call. Yes, I don't edit out the mistakes. Yeah, I just we just put them out there. Talk there you it. go. Now, unless I dropped some kind of four-letter word, then I'd have to do that because we're on the radio. But nonetheless, here we go. Our good friend with his second call ever after emails after emails last year, which was awesome. It is our good friend, Gary Harkin Reader. Hey, Scott and Mo. Gary Harkin Reader in Pocono area, Pennsylvania. Hey, I guess got your prediction show. So I thought I'd jot some notes down and uh, run it by you. Uh -oh. Just want to let you know uh -oh. the things I'm going to say. I haven't uh -oh. been drinking. Well, maybe a little bit. But anyway, <laughs> here we go. <clears throat> contrary, to, contrary to popular thought, my cracked crystal ball says that the key to this season is the offense. Mm -hmm. Everyone's leaning on the defense. But last year, when you look at it, who were the quarterbacks that the Raiders played? Tommy who? Walsh? Tua? Mahomes? Probably celebrating Christmas early. Minshew? Stick! And Stidham. I trust Minshew and Getze. Both have no ego. However, it's important that the Raiders win an away game. Hmm. My prediction? Season will go 10-7. and seven. Your thoughts. Great show. Thanks again, guys. Bye-bye. All right, Gary. Thanks so much. We appreciate that very much. Uh, listen, again, I think 10, I think 10 is the ceiling. So I could see that happening. His point about the offense, Mo, to me, I think we've been saying that. I think the defense is going to be fine. I'm not saying they're going to be perfect. Do could they possibly be an upper echelon defense? Yes. Could they be a much better defense than they've been or as good as they were towards the end of last year? Yes. So it comes back, and I keep saying quarterback play, but it is offense. It's quarterback, it's offensive line holding up and doing well. So if that happens, if that offense can be a top 15 offense, let's say, with a defense that's there, then this team can, can do 10 wins, I think, even with their schedule. I think they can get the 10 wins, but Scott, and I'm looking at the numbers here. Mm -hmm. Last season, the Raiders were 24th in red zone scoring. <laughs> if they're going to get to 10 wins, it has to be significantly better than that. You're not it, it, Look, we could talk about the quarterback position. We could talk about play calls. We could talk about the coaches. You're not getting to 10 wins if you're getting inside the 20 and settling for field goals on a regular basis, yeah. trading that off, and not getting six points. It, it's, it, it sounds simple, 
but the Raiders have to be able to convert on crucial downs. As you said, the offense doesn't have to be electric. I know I said Garner Minshew is going to put us on a roller coaster. He's going to have some wild throws. He's going to have some. <laughs> he's going to have some head scratchers. But when yes, the Raiders sir. get inside the twenty, and maybe that's Samir White time, maybe that's Brock Bowers time, maybe that's Devontae Adams time, or a combination of all of them. But they have to convert inside the twenty if they're going to win all the those football games because there's no way you can stall, kick a bunch of field goals. Daniel Carlson is great, but you're not beating the Chiefs again with a stalled offense. You're not Miami. I know they had a sloppy game last year, but that's a prolific high scoring offense. Those teams are gonna are gonna score some points. You can't depend you can't depend on your defense to shut everyone out. It's just not a realistic right. expectation. Your offense has to be able to score to score and convert in crucial situations. Red zone, third and short, third downs. fourth downs if you go for them. Yeah. Those are the key situations where the Reds offense has to come up big if they're gonna pull out some good wins, quality wins against good football teams. Absolutely, hundred percent. It's like the win in Kansas City is a good example of where the defense had a great day and it carried them completely. But you can't do that consistently. It's just not possible in the NFL. Mm -hmm. Gary, thank you so much for your call. Mm -hmm. We appreciate it so much. Real quick, Mo, we only got a few moments left. But I do know that on Sunday, you will be doing your Bleach Report live after the game. Let everybody know how to find you. Over on the Bleach Report app, I also tweet out the link on the X, I'll, as Scott said, live right after the game. If the Raiders do something spectacular or the Chargers do, I'll talk about the game on TNT Sports tonight on Monday Woo. with Coy Wire, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Pacific Time. There you go. And we will be live here with uh, Silver and Black today post-game. Myself and Murph from Raiders Fan Radio. He is our voice of the fan. So after every game, as you guys know, for those of you coming back for another season, we get Murph on. We talk about the game. He gives me his fan perspective. I take him down a rung sometimes with the objective. Uh, and sometimes he makes me aware of things that I'm not aware of. So it's a great time. We have great live chat during that post game show. So make sure if you don't already subscribe to the show, wherever you get your audio, do that first. And second, go check out the YouTube page where we'll be live after the game and be a part of that too. You can find us at silver and black today on YouTube. Mo, my friend, dude, I can't wait to talk to you next week when we get to talk about some football action. Take care of the nation. See you Sunday. All right. For our producer, Mike Robbie, for our executive producer on the radio in Las Vegas, Mark Bonilla, and Mo Moten, I'm Scott Cobrans, and this has been Silver and Black Today. All right, it's football time. We'll talk to you on Sunday night, everybody. All right. Now we'll see if Ryan comes back in the next few minutes. Oh, God, that was just terrible. Ugh.